man, it was cheesy, but it still got an impossibly good taste. Hey guys, so I just saw Mission Impossible 5, Rogue Nation, and at least to say, there's some Scooby-Doo shit in this movie. What I mean by Scooby-Doo, I mean there's some really silly moments with villain resolution. There are just very silly running sequences and silly villain stuff. But the thing is, we've kind of become used to that with the Mission Impossible series, especially with the last film, where we, in the first, what, wasn't in the first 30 minutes we had some giant imaginary projector thing project this hallway and it was it, it was stupid it looked really dumb but we still enjoyed it so for this film i was expecting the same stuff i was expecting some silly business and some silly gadgets and they pushed it a little bit they pushed it even farther than the last one did in my opinion there's some stuff that happens in this movie that is okay the beginning of the movie they're giving him his message on a vinyl record. When it's really not the vinyl record, it's actually the little laser show thingy. But the action is still very consistent. The only thing is that the one scene I was really, really hyped about, which is the one they've been showing for the ads all over the place, which was the plain one, it's the opening scene. And sure, that's pretty cool to start off with something big, but then every kind of stunt afterwards is like, because you've already started off with the huge one, right? This has been a case in some action movies where they start off with this super huge, awesome scene. If, God forbid, I'm going to use this reference, Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers 2. When Optimus Prime has that super awesome fight where he's defending all those guys off of Shia LaBeouf, and then he gets stabbed in the back and boom, you know, he dies. That scene is never perplexed. Mind you, the movie's awful, but in terms of action, the scene is never perplexed. Same thing kind of happens here. There's the bike sequence, which was pretty rad, but the problem is you can see all the cars are fake. Now, admittedly, obviously doing a scene like this at such high speeds, you obviously couldn't make everything real. Understandable, but you could have spent at least an hour on each car because they look like little putty things on the road. So the one thing I was really questioning was, is the story going to be better than the last one? Admittedly, the last one had a really solid pace, had some really cool character moments, and had some really awesome action. But the villain was non-existent. I still have no idea who he was. And I've seen the movie recently, and I can't remember who on earth it was. So in this one, we get this guy called Solomon. And he is this big bad dude who's the head of the syndicate. And he basically has... He looks like Stephen Lang if he dropped 50 pounds and looked more British. Because Stephen Lang has this kind of Eastern American look. Whereas Solomon is a straight up... Like, he actually does this twitching moment too, which is just so silly. Again, Scooby-Doo moments. But again, we run into the same issue as the last film is, what on earth is his motives? Because he can? So his motives weren't really that great. The Mission Impossible movies have never really had good motives for bad guys in these movies. They've been alright, but when you really think about the overall product, it's like, that was kind of a silly thing to do. But for real, the main thing you want to know about Mission Impossible is, do the action scenes hold up? And yes, they do. For the most part. The car chase in Morocco was fantastic. It has so many layers and had so many sequences. It was sweet. And when they got on the bikes, oh crap. I was beating. My heart was beating. But then when I started seeing the putty cards, I was sitting there going, you know, Mad Max did this better. Sure, Mad Max did do some VFX stuff, but it looked better than this. So that kind of drew me out a little bit. But the film is still very consistent, despite the fact that it actually does drag on a little bit too long. In my opinion, the film could have been about 20 minutes shorter because there's just a lot of moments where the film just doesn't keep you constant. And this is a movie that is constant itself. but. As I said, since we see this plane sequence at the very beginning of the movie, everything afterwards is kind of like, eh, it's not as cool as that plane sequence. So while the film is still entertaining, you've already reached your peak within the first five minutes, so everything from there is just downward. And in the end, I actually didn't like it as much as Ghost Protocol because the dialogue, man. The dialogue in this movie is so silly at times. For instance, in that same intro where the record is playing, and it turns out it's the syndicate, it's like, 
if your mission, if you choose to accept is that you're the bad guy, why are you saying that? You're just being stupid now. And the funny thing is, too, is there's a supposed relationship between Ethan Hunt and the girl, yet his wife isn't mentioned, even though she was shoehorned in the last one, so I was expecting some shoehorn in in this one, but they didn't even do this. So they're like, okay, we have this relationship that's kind of there, but I don't know. This is the closest that the Mission Impossible series has ever got to trying being like an American James Bond. The amount of gadgets, the amount of silliness, the amount of effects, the amount of stunts, the amount of explosions... Pretty much Bond, except with Tom Cruise. So in the end, what is my final rating for this movie? It's a 4 out of 7. It's a fun ride, but I still feel that the perplexing issue with the whole momentum of the film really weighs it down, the dialogue weighs it down, and it's a little too long. But it's still really fun to watch. There's some great sequences in it, if you can excuse the kind of CGI car. But other than that, I still enjoyed it, and I think it was a good time. But I still think that the previous film, Ghost Protocol, was better. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys next time. You know what? Actually, considering that I'm holding this, imagine if Tom Cruise were to do this. He's 50, he's plus 50 right now, and he could probably kick my ass at this. I've done this three years in a row, and I probably couldn't even contend with a guy. But imagine if he did this, especially World's Toughest Mutter. So how about that? Tom Cruise for Tough Mutter. Hashtag. There we go. See you guys later. God forbid if he actually did it, that'd be sweet. Buckle down.